Let's imagine you're browsing through the Figma community and you find a template that would be perfect for your app. Or maybe a client sent you an XD file that they want you now to bring to life with Bravo. If you've ever been in one of these situations where you had an existing design file that you had to bring to life with Bravo, this is the video for you. We're going to have a look at how we can approach such an existing design file and make it look the best in Bravo. And to show you that, to teach you these steps, we're going to have a look at a template which I found in the Figma community myself and we're going to Bravoize that. So make sure the design fits the Bravo guidelines and also add some text. I expect that you already know some parts of Bravo, so you shouldn't be a complete beginner so I can go quicker and focus on really working with an existing design rather than explaining all of the Bravo tags. If you're already somewhat comfortable with Bravo, we're ready to go. There are thousands of amazing Figma and Adobe XD templates out there that you can choose to download from the web. Some of them are paid, some of them are free, but only very few are optimized for Bravo. By the end of this video, you'll know how you can take such an existing design file and make it work with Bravo. I'm going to teach you the steps that I take when I get a file from a client or find a template that I really like. Additionally, I'll be pointing out some little aspects which might cause your app to look different than you expected. I already did a full video on how to deal with visual bugs, so if there's anything specific, head over to that video. Enough with the talking, let's get our hands on Figma. I was searching through the Figma community and found this Malika UI kit, which I really like. So I'm just going to duplicate it to my own drafts and then we can have a look at how it looks in detail. When you download a template like this, they often have multiple pages. So for example, we have this intro page here with some nice pictures and also a disclaimer. Then there is this components page. I probably won't be using any of these either, but I'm just going to leave them in for now just to see if something nice in the pages comes up. We have some sample screens here and you can see most of the aspects of an app would be covered. Now it's time to choose the pages that I really like and then convert them to Bravo. I'm going to start off with the intro screen here. It only has a couple of elements and we should be able to Bravoize that fairly quickly. I'm going to copy that and paste it into the file that I'll be importing into Bravo. So I'm not going to import this file because there's a lot of things that I don't want in there. For example, these headers. And instead of deleting everything that annoys me, I'm just going to build a new file from scratch. I just called it Malika Bravorized and I'm going to paste the intro screen in here. On further inspection, you can see that this has the auto layout enabled. And auto layout is something that we cannot import into Bravo, but we don't have to worry about that. I'm going to rebuild the screen inside of a new frame because that way I also have the choice to choose an aspect ratio that I really like. You know from previous videos that I always like to use the iPhone 11 Pro Max and I'm going to place that right next to this. The aspect ratio of the screens doesn't have to be exactly the same as the iPhone 11 Pro Max. This that we got here is probably fine as well. I'm just doing this so you don't design for a very old Android device for example and then get responsiveness issues. Now it's time to mirror what is happening here into the iPhone 11 Pro Max screen that I'm going to be then importing into Bravo. So the goal is to replace everything inside of this screen so we can delete this one with the auto layout. Another reason I'm doing this and not just place my tags inside of this file is that I don't want any of these hidden elements. As you can see, or maybe you can't see it, but there are some hidden elements here that I don't want to copy. We don't want that pager here, for example, and if we just looked at the design, it wouldn't be visible. So I'm just going to select the elements that I really want. So for example, this picture, I will duplicate that using Control D and drag it in here. Now we've got this little button here. Now we have converted the first section of the page, which is usually a good place to think about containers. I'm going to drag one in here. So this is going to be a second level frame. I'm going to drag that into the iPhone and those will be inside of that frame. Let's give it the container tag. When you add containers, make sure that it's touching all of the sides and also the top and all elements beneath that. In this special case, I'm going to make the container the full size of the screen. 
The reason for that is that we don't have any further independent sections. For example, if we were to fetch this text from an API, then this text would have to have the flexo tag. And the flexo tag, as you might remember, can only be the bottommost element of a container. So we would basically have a container that moves until here and then have this last element as a new container. Since this is going to be a static page and also will most likely have the full width of the user smartphone, we're going to keep it with one container. So the next element would be this white box which has all of the information in it. What you can see again is that this frame has the rounded corners. So again, we're not dealing with a rectangle element, but the frame is styled. I don't want that in my case, so I'm going to drag another rectangle. Make sure that it's touching on all sides. Now let's move it up here and also give it a nice radius here. So this frame has a radius of 24, so I'm going to put that in here as well. Now let's make it the same color, which is white in this case, and duplicate all of the other elements. And again, everything is placed inside of frames using the auto layout. Since these are the last elements that I'm going to use inside of this page, why don't we try out moving them with the auto layout, because after that I will be importing this screen anyway, so we can have a look at how it looks. So I'm just going to select it, hit Ctrl D again, and then move it over here. The same thing goes with the text and those icons. Now it's time to take this file and import it into Bravo. Since I don't want to import the original screen, I'm going to place the skip tag behind this. The result of the skip tag is that this screen is going to be ignored by the Bravo importer. Now before we import into Bravo, and I know I annoy you with this all the time, but let's have some fun by giving our elements proper names. I will be naming this top level frame, so the frame that covers the whole screen, intro. And I'm also going to add the intro tag, which basically means this screen will be displayed before entering the app. Since we won't be binding any of these elements to data, we could basically stop the binding here, because we won't see the names again. But especially when you're working together with someone, it might be good to give this whole file some more structure. Let's copy this link and paste it into Bravo. In Bravo, create a new project, paste the Figma link here and click on create new project. Now all of the files will be imported, but as you remember, we're not going to import anything that had the skip tag in it. Now you can see it's not displaying two screens, but only the one with the intro tag that we wanted. When you're importing a file, always make sure that you check the notifications here. We can see we have one notification saying missing font. In that case, we could go ahead and fix that, clicking here and then uploading our fonts. I'm not going to do that for the sake of this tutorial, but if you find your font being displayed differently, this is the place where to look. Now, opening this in Bravo Vision shows us that we did everything correctly. It seems to look nice. So you see, in this case, we got away with using the auto layout for these elements. Having a look again at what we see here in Bravo Vision, I find two things that I would like to improve. The first thing that I notice is that the skip text inside of the rectangle has an offset, so it's not perfectly in the middle. And the second thing would be that we're allowed to scroll, even if it might look cleaner if it was just this screen without scrolling. Now let's head back over to our Figma file and see if we can fix that. The scrolling issue should be fairly easy to solve. When you select the container, you can see that it spans over the full screen, leaving some padding here. And this is exactly the padding that Bravo is displaying. If we don't want this padding, like in our case, we can just make this container smaller. If you move it up and see that some elements are moving, you can hold down the control key. Now we only have a few pixels padding between those elements. Should the screen actually be longer, like we would have it on an iPhone 11 Pro Max, Bravo is going to display some white space. But with the emulator that I'm using, we're on a smaller phone, causing this scrolling issue. The last issue is the skip button. Inside of the Figma file, it looks all right, but in Bravo, it looks different. So in order to solve that, click on the text and make the text box bigger. I'm going to hold down Alt and make the text box the same width and height as the rectangle. 
Now you can see that the text is a little too high, but when we go into the text settings, we can align it to the middle again. This should fix our issue, so let's get back to Bravo and update the Figma file. In Bravo, click this little update icon, which fetches the Figma file again. Now in Bravo Vision, tap and hold to open this menu and click update with Bravo. Now we can see, you can see it by this purple thing popping up, we can't scroll down anymore. And also the skip button is aligned. Now that I'm happy with how the intro screen turned out, I'm going to remove the original one to improve the loading time for the import. Notice how we made sure that the design was looking good before caring about any of the functionalities. Only now that the design is ready, we can talk about Bravo tags or using the prototyping tool to link pages. Back in the original community file, we can see that the next screen that we would tackle is this splash screen number two, which would be linked to the first one. Since I already converted the first one, I can easily duplicate it and just change the text and the image. I quickly did that here, but notice how it still looks like the first intro screen. So first of all, we're going to remove the skip button here and we're going to change the color of our little indicator here. Since you can only have one intro screen per app, we're going to also remove the intro tag. The last step would be to connect those two screens using the prototyping tool. Select the prototype here, check out the chevron and then connect those two. So now when we click on the chevron, we go to the intro screen too. For the skip button, we would bind that to our home screen. So if you don't want to see the whole intro, you could click skip and be directed directly to the home screen, which we don't have at this moment yet. Lastly, we're going to connect the chevron in the intro 2 to the intro first screen, so the user can switch between those two screens. Now let's quickly go to Bravo, update the Figma file again, and then check in Bravo Vision if that works as we expected. And as you can see, when I click here on the chevrons, we can switch between those two screens, which is exactly what we wanted to do. And to see, this is also not scrolling because we duplicated it from the first screen. This is how you can convert any existing design file into a native app using Bravo Studio. But we don't have to stop there. Let's have a look again at the Figma community file to see if we can find some more examples. Oh, but before we go, make sure you are subscribed to the channel. Now let's see what else we've got here. We talked about the splash screens, so a third page would work the same way as the second one did, so also linking the chevrons again to switch between those pages. Then we've got authentication. An authentication screen would only be a little different. So for example, you could still use the same concepts we had earlier with the image and also with this white content box. If you find something that has to support a functionality, for example, this input field needs to have the input tag from Bravo or these buttons, which need to be connected to the login provider. Then it would be great to first research how those functionalities come into Bravo before just copy and pasting all of the elements. For example, this country drop-down menu wouldn't be possible with the current version of Bravo. But for example, for input fields like this phone number, or if you wanted to replace all of this with a real login, there are already videos on this channel. There will be a video on the social login using OAuth 2 as well, but for now you have to refer to the written documentation. It often happens that templates like this have elements like the status bar or this line here that are supposed to resemble a smartphone screen. Make sure that you remove them before importing into Bravo. The home screen can be built like we did with the intro screen, just this time there's also going to be data connected. For example, to get the username or these lists. This is pretty easy. Bravo 3.0 introduced multiple data sources for a single page. You could basically just fetch the user information like the username and the user profile picture from your user table. And then have separate tables for the cookbooks here that are bound to a slider or this normal list with featured community recipes. If you want to request this list from an API, as you probably would, then remember to only design the first element of the list. Delete all the other elements, as this list will be generated dynamically. If you need to fresh up on those Bravo basics, I've linked the perfect video for you below in the video description. If you find functionalities where you're not sure how to implement them, I would advise you to search through the Bravo community. 
For example, you might wonder how you can implement this favorite icon. There has already a video been made for this by Carla Fernandez and you can find it in our YouTube channel. The missing designs from this template can be duplicated the same way as we did with the intro screen. Then only the functionality is missing. Since there's just too much happening in this one app template, I'm simply going to direct you to the resources where you can find all the information to bind those functionalities. Don't worry if it takes some more iterations until the design is implemented perfectly. I hope this video has helped you get started, turn those boring templates into real native apps. If you struggle with anything, feel free to reach out in the Bravo community forum. And something you could do right now is like this video and paste the link to your favorite design template in the comments. I would love to have a look at it and see what you're currently working on with Bravo Studio. Thank you for watching and I'll see you for a new episode of Build It With Jonas next Tuesday. Bye.